Welcome to QRP Practical and today what I'm doing is testing um, a cheap antenna switcher which I bought off eBay and comparing it to an antenna switch that I actually made about 30 years ago. Now I used this one for switching anything up to about 100 watts on 27 megahertz. Whoops. Um, from memory it had an insertion loss of around, or I shouldn't say insertion loss, it would add about 1.2 to 1 to the SWR. So it was fine, it did the job. All this is is an auto switch and you can imagine the wiring inside. There's a wire from this terminal, it goes to the middle of the toggle. It get, one wire goes to this connector, the other wire goes to that connector. I'm not going to pull it apart because it's just too simple. I don't think anybody needs to see that. Anyway, perhaps when I was doing th uh, soldering 30 years ago, it wasn't a great thing for people to see. I'd rather not show it. <laughs> no, seriously, it's probably okay, but I have used this. The damn thing will never die. I actually did replace the switch on it once, I think about five or six years ago, but it keeps going. I have used that for HF radio. Now, having explained all that, I've also bought this very cheap antenna switch off eBay. So let me get this out for you. It says a thousand watts. I've got no way of testing a thousand watts, so that's fine. Let me put that to one side. And I think what we might do is we'll try and see if the insertion loss is comparable to my homemade switch and just see how much it actually does add to the uh, antenna setup. Now I do have two of these. I have another one that I've been using on my Yaesu and I have run 100 watts through it. It doesn't seem to be a problem. It handles that quite well. So, let's see now. First of all, what we might just do is just to, I guess what you'd say, prove the system. And I've got a 50 ohm dummy load and I'm plugging it straight into the antenna analog. And I haven't set this up, so it's where I was mucking around with the low pass filter earlier. 1.0, let's go up in frequency. At 16 megahertz, it's still 1.0. At 40, it's a nice flat response curve, I'll give it that. And at 78, now you see we're starting to get a little bit of, um, a little bit of an increase in SWR. 1.4, let's take it up to the, uh, let's see, let's take it up to the um, two meter band. This is something for me to be careful and mindful of if I'm ever using this on a two meter radio it will add a slight amount of uh, reflection so that gives you an idea so at what is it two meter band it's a 1.4 SWR so what we'll do now is we'll put my homemade switch into line and we'll test how flat the response is there just one moment Now have my switch in line and the dummy load and let's turn on the analyzer. 1.5, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, obviously it's going to go massively high when I disconnect it. 1.5, let's come back to 1.6, 1.7. It's not the best is it guys? Anyway, let's just try going down somewhere. Oh, let's see. Look at that, on HF bands, this is 24 megahertz, uh, SWR 1.0, or 1 to 1, I should say. So that's great. Um, let's go even lower. Let's go down to 4, and about 2 megahertz, it's still 1.0. This box is quite capable of switching uh, antennas or radios in the HF bands, and it would probably do it a pinch to use as an antenna switch on two meters. I certainly don't think it would be any good on the 70 centimeter band. So it's a pass, it's a pass, especially I'll give it a bonus point because I built it not really knowing what I was doing. Okay, so now let's try this eBay switch. I think this cost me somewhere in the region of, oh, $30. I'll have a check when I get back online. 
And I got two of them because they were fairly cheap and I thought, well, you know, if nothing else, I can use these sockets, I can use the switch, I can use this metal box, great. So let's see how this goes. Let's take my antenna switch out of line. One thing I do like about this switch, although it has three outputs, it also has an off. And I haven't quite worked out whether that actually shorts it in case of, say, for storms are around, you could just... It, it isn't an ideal solution. You really should disconnect your coax if there are electrical storms around. But if you could quickly... If you had somebody in the house and you weren't around and they didn't know how to disconnect a coax, tell them just to put their switch on off. At least it's something. I, I don't know, but I'll have to check. At least it disconnects. It may short the coax. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll test that with a meter before we finished here. So, here's the setup. I'll turn the antenna analyzer on and we'll switch this to two because it's on the second. Two, rather. And at two megahertz, we've got zero. So, a nice and flat sort of um, switch there. It's not going to raise the SWR down on these lower frequencies. So I'm up on 10 megahertz now. I'm seeing much of a similar sort of story. Let's go up into the higher bands. 1.2 on 26 megahertz. 1.2. So there is a slight rise. I think probably that's a little bit of a little bit of reactance. I think. Let's go up and have a look at this thing. On oh, that's not good. So here we are on six meters. We're already hitting 1.7. Dare we go up further? That's really not great, is it? Wow. I was actually thinking of using this for a switch if it would work up on these frequencies, but absolutely not now. SWR of 2.3 on the 2 meter band. So my little homebrew switch with a, an auto switch in it, you know, a 12 volt switch for your car, has a flatter, better SWR response than a piece of purpose built equipment. I mean, this is going to be fine on HF. That really is the only place I want to use it. Although my radio is also capable of six meters and I won't want to be switching it through there if I'm using six meters, will I? Again, something else to consider. I do have another VHF UH. I have a, a much better switch up there as well that I actually use on the radio and it will give a much better flatter response I'm sure because it costs a fortune and it's die cast metal and all those nice things it seems to be manufactured a lot better so look for uh, HF radios as I said I've tried 100 watts through this thing on HF it handles it it doesn't miss a beat and everything's fine um, but I wouldn't use it on any bands over 10 meters above 10 meters so let's just uh, let's go one step further with this shall we let's have a look if we can what's it going to be it's probably going to be these two screws isn't it done is taken the commercial thousand watt coaxial antenna switch apart. Have a look at this, right? This apparently will take a thousand watts. There is no way I would be running 1000 watts through a four-way double pole switch. And that's all it is. It's a four-way double pole. It's not even a ceramic. Now, having you know given it that criticism, it may well take a thousand watts, but I certainly wouldn't like it a thousand watts into a mismatched antenna um, with this thing in line. I'd hate to see what would happen. The other thing about this, well, a couple of things. One, the, the soldering appears decent. The actual quality of soldering looks quite good 
and each of the connectors have got the ground independently sort of connected to them which is great I guess rather than relying on these nuts to uh, ground the, the outside uh, of the connector. However on the inside here look look at all this wire look at all this extra wire that's just completely unnecessary I know it's there to make someone's job easier to solder this up but look this is coming in from the center pin and all it's doing is going over to this pin over here look at how long that is look at it and this goes off to the other center pin there's no reason for that to be anywhere near as long as it is and this is why the SWR was getting up so high on the VHF frequencies and even on six meters is because there's all this inductance floating around in here now merits of this switch aside or demerits however you'd like to look at it I think there could be something said to actually good for um, sorry cleaning this up and reducing all this extraneous wire that's floating around in here and that might be something that I'll do and we'll see what happens in the next video However, uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I've actually got a switch up there that's okay. This is all right at HF frequencies, but I still don't like the idea of all this extra unnecessary wire. So look, this is probably, in my opinion, um, and you just have to search around on eBay, you'll find these. I won't put a link because it tends to drive the price of these things up. It's okay for HF. It is probably not okay for a thousand watts. And you could probably do yourself a decent favour by shortening these leads. VK3 Papa Alpha Alpha, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.